shaping him. And uh, through that time, David grew in intimacy with the Lord. And so tonight, uh, let's do something that we don't get to do all the time where we get to worship together. But at the same time, I want to remind you, we are worshiping alone. You know, it's in your heart, it's in your life that you get to God. Would you bow your heads? Uh, would you close your eyes? And uh, Eric is going to open us up in prayer. Lord, uh, we just come before you. We thank you for a, a night of just pure worship towards you, Lord. Lord, we know that um, there's so many things that can go wrong during a week, so many things that uh, can just bring us down. But, Lord, we have the ability to turn our eyes to you. Uh, and that's only because your grace allows us to. Your your mercy just washes over us and says, I accept you because my son bled for you. We thank you for that, Lord, because we can't do it on our own. Lord, we pray that today, right now, you fill us with an unrestrained joy, Lord, yeah. that you just pour into our hearts so that we can shine as a light, a brightest light that we can ever be, Lord, for you to this world. Lord, come in to our lives and just place your hand on every single thing that can touch us. Lord, we, we need you. We cry out for you. And that's what these songs are. They're not little melodies, Lord. They are prayers. They are heartfelt prayers that we ask, Lord. As this first song says, we decide. We decided to follow you. Lord, thank you for not turning your back to us and saying, welcome. Welcome, my son. Welcome, my daughter. We are privileged to be a part of the family of God, Lord. Thank you for loving us. We love you. In your name I pray. If you're able, would you please stand? Yeah, oh, oh, we come out here today, we come out here tonight, no more fears and no more fright, our King, our King, we worship you, yeah. the song I'm going to invite you to have the privilege to close your eyes, to lift your hands if you want to, to get on your knees, to come to the altar, whatever it is that you would like to do tonight to be close to the Lord. I want you to feel free to express yourself, all right? I want you to dance before the Lord. I want you to sing before the Lord. And I want you to, like we said earlier, to be in an audience of one, the Father, the Holy Spirit, and the Son.
decide now to follow Jesus? Will you decide now to follow Jesus? Will you decide now to follow Jesus? No turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning. invite you right now to just close your eyes behold the glory of a king and I want you just to clear your conscience with the Lord right now just say Lord if there be any wicked way in me try me see me Lord God account unto me nothing that I deserve and have your mercy be upon me Lord oh Lord we love you tonight oh Lord we adore with our voice we have come to give you glory we've come we've come we've come we've come we have come to give you praise you're welcome you're welcomed in this place 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 Welcomed in this place. Have your way, 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 have your way.
wanna follow you with all my heart. I worship you, God. I wanna follow you with all my heart. I worship you, God. Sing that out. I wanna follow you with all my heart. I worship you, God. You welcomed in this place. 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 Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and let all that's within me shout out, shout out. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and let all that's within me shout out, shout out. Have your way, have your way. round of applause for the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You know me, and I know you. You're the God all my storms you're the voice inside my head
head. Let's repeat that. You know me, and I know you. You're the God who calms all my storms. You're the voice inside my head. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't let go. Don't lose trust. Don't lose hope. Cause you can have all my fears, God. God who comes all my storms. Let me hear you, church. You're the voice inside my head. What is he saying? Don't give up. Don't let go. Don't lose trust.
don't want to ride on somebody else's passion. I don't want to find that I'm just dry bones. I want to burn with unquenchable fire deep down inside. I don't want to ride on somebody else's passion No, I don't want to find that I'm just dry bones I want to burn with unquenchable fire Deep down inside, see it coming alive Help me find my own flame
the shells of this can that they out of this can. Lord, we just praise you. We, we give you so much honor, Lord God. We desire you. We desire to have our own flame, Lord God. We are not going to wait for our spouses to get on board, our children to get on board. We are not going to wait for our family and our friends to get on board, Lord God. The ship is sailing at high noon, and we are getting on today. Father, in the ship, we know that the storms come, but we are safe, Lord God, in the safety. Because in the storm, you slept. You took a nap because you knew everything was going to be okay. Father, may you go before us as we listen to your word in both the woman's Bible study and the Bible study in here. How powerful it is to love you and to be able to love you. Thank you for letting us worship you. Even after <laughs> teaching like a couple studies this morning, my voice is gone. But Lord God, you provide the fire. We, we are just there to, to give it back to you. We thank you for everyone who's serving tonight, Lord God, in whatever capacity. Hallelujah, Jesus, for those whose feet are ready to share the gospel and help it be spread and the truth be lifted up. We love you in Jesus' name. If you guys would like to get up and greet, uh, greet somebody, um, I encourage you to go with small. Go, go around, find someone you don't know, uh, say hello, and uh, the woman also, if you'd like to go to your Bible study. You can tell, yeah. It's like, I'm sorry I'm not going through puberty. I was like, oh man, that's intense. Isn't it, isn't it a blessing to serve the Lord, though? I mean, it really is. And isn't it fantastic? Um, I'm really glad to serve the Lord because, honestly, there are so many things. I was talking to someone last night um, who, was, who was sharing with me, to some extent, just things that they were scared about, right? They were sharing with me about, oh, hey, you know, um, if this politician comes in, if that politician comes in, back and forth, back and forth. And I said, man, you really don't need to fear if you have Jesus. Because honestly, all I learned from this past election was a lot of us need to get closer to Jesus. Because a lot of people's foundations were rocked. And to this day, man, people are so focused on earthly issues, there is no respect for the Lord. And, uh, you know, we got to be stronger and closer to Christ I mean, I, you, if you know me, I can get political too, but that's like a side hobby. Um, there's got to be some voices, whether you agree with me or not. That's okay. I disagree with me sometimes too. A year later, I'm like, what? What did you say that? Um, but tonight is not political because it's a hierarchy that's already been stated and it cannot be removed. And that's that Jesus is our king. Amen. And so that's who we're serving tonight. And um, I'm so happy to be giving this study. Um, Number one, in the most selfish text, because I actually got a wireless mic instead of an earpiece, and I'm so used to teaching with one of these, and it's very nice. On the second hand, um, this passage is personal, and it's beautiful. Um, because you guys are, we're not, it's not Sunday morning, and I can get a little more personal with you guys, right? Um, I was tempted for a second to, I was asked to speak, and I was waiting for, for communications from Israel on what passage to teach on, because that's usually how it goes. Um, but if you know anything about Pastor John, my dad, sometimes you don't get the communication. So I realized, oh, I think I'm free to teach um, on something. And so then I asked Cindy, I go, well, what did they 
what were the people teaching on? And she's like, oh, they were in Joshua, uh, Proverbs. I was like, oh, no, those are all over the place. There's, she's like, try to find something that, that fits. I said, oh, good, I'll pick a book in the Bible. Um, that's what we'll teach on tonight. And I picked the middle book, uh, the book of Psalms. And I'm going to tell you, I didn't pick it. I really didn't pick it. Here's the crazy part. You want to hear this? Here's the crazy part. This was divine by the Holy Spirit to choose this passage because, because I heard the Lord tell me, I heard the Lord tell me to teach about resting in his shadow. And then when I went to open up my Bible to find out where that was, he said, I want you to teach on that as your title. And I sent that in as my title, not knowing what it was. And then, and then I heard him say, oh, and also teach from Psalm 91. Turns out Psalm 91.1 is about resting in the shadow. That's the Holy Spirit. He's cool. That's, again, don't fear, because the, the, the God of the universe will give you the words to speak, right? Amen? He's on it, and he's got us covered. Um, even sometimes in our lackadaisical laziness, he's got us covered, and I love that about him. Uh, would you go ahead and bow your heads and close your eyes, and let's ask the Holy Spirit to just prepare our hearts for what he has to share with us. <sighs> Holy Spirit, we invite you here, and we know that you are wonderful. We know that you come and you inhabit this place. We know that you're already here because you dwell on the face of the earth, and you dwell in the hearts of men. But Lord God, I pray that the veil would be torn between our earthly onset and our focus, and we would be right back on you. And Holy Spirit, as we allow you to move in us, would you bring us into the throne room of God? where Jesus sits at the right hand, Lord. And we pray like Isaiah 41.10, that you would lift us up by your mighty right hand, that we might be with you today, that we might learn. I love how I'm a crazy person. I love that I have no authority beyond what you've given me to give your word. And I love how even if no one in here trusts me, they don't have to trust me because we can trust your word. And that's what I love about it. It's consistent, it's full, it's fulfilling, and it also is lifelong lasting. And it's with us. And God, your word is going to teach things that I'm not going to say. And there are things that I'm going to say that they probably aren't going to remember for the good. But Lord God, you do work things all together for good, for those who are called. And so tonight, Lord God, let there be a refreshing. Let there be a new insight. Let there be an understanding. Cut us with that two-edged sword. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Could you open up your Bibles to the book of Psalms, chapter 91? Psalms, chapter 91. And as you're doing that... um, Psalms chapter 91. I'm reading out the New Living Translation if you're turning on your app. Uh, if you're turning on your app to Psalms, the New Living Translation. I know I committed a heresy, sorry. Um, there's also some scripture from other versions. I know, right? The NIV, newly in, nearly inspired version. Oh my goodness. Are you doing that up there? I am. Uh, Because the word's the word, man, and some of these versions are just fantastic, and you can get a whole breadth of knowledge from viewing different versions. I love it. And very rarely do I get to to teach uh, adults. So let me just introduce myself. I'm Elijah. You should all pretty much know me, uh, but I teach the high school ministry uh, here, so I mostly teach the youngins, um, and sometimes, like onions, they can uh, be a little sour at the teaching, a (laughs) a little sharp, but you guys are, are mature enough to love the word, right? Not all of them. There's some good ones there, but uh, some, some of the kids haven't learned to appreciate the word yet, but we got it, dude. We got it good, and the Lord's going to move tonight, and he's going to teach us, and this is exciting. So we come to Psalm 91. Psalm 91 is so interesting because what I notice about good text in the Bible is wherever there's something good from God, there's some attack from the enemy t- trying to destroy it, Right? And immediately, when I'm trying to get some context on the scripture, I'm like, okay, so, so let me confirm who wrote it, because I don't want to assume. We never want to assume. And immediately, although I do know who wrote it, it automatically starts an argument about the author. And you know what I did? Did I read the argument? No, I just exited out. And I went straight to the text. Because within the text is richness. And it turns out that this psalm, it's so important who wrote it, and I'll tell you why. And I'll tell you why the enemy wants to argue over it. Because not because it was written by King David, That's not why the enemy wants to to, to cause dissensions in the church. It's because of the place that David was, what he did, and why he wrote it, is why the enemy wants to distract from it. And the enemy has no place in this church. He has no place in our lives. We're not letting him in in the name of Jesus. And in this passage, we're not letting him in either, because you know why? We're going to learn from this. And here's what happened. David, let's break it free. Let's just break down the strongholds of hell and theology and all those people who are trying to argue, and let's get to the nitty-gritty and say this. David was in a point where he he had committed one of the worst acts of his kingship. If you're familiar with King David, I like to just give a little background. King David started out as a shepherd boy. He came to fame and notoriety when he got 3.1 million followers on his Twitter. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, he actually came to fame when he took down who? Goliath. 
And he ended up being anointed as king when who was, who was king over Israel during the time? Saul. And through some many books and some boring chapters and some good chapters, um, we get to a point where David's king. Now, David was not only king, but he was a mighty king. Actually, perhaps, other than King Solomon, one of the greatest. And I want you to remember these for this study, these descriptions, because these are important. He was one of the greatest kings, one of the strongest kings. If you ever read in Chronicles, in the first few chapters, where it describes the mighty men of David, how one man killed like 300 people with a jawbone, they were strong. David was also a bit of a stud. He's tall, dark, and handsome, apparently, accordingly. David was a good-looking man. And we know that he was also a ladies' man, sometimes by force. And that's where we get to the sad side of David. David was an adulterer. With, like, he, was, he was a bit of, of, a, of an interesting man, right? He was a murderer. He was greedy. We also know that he wasn't a good parent. He didn't parent his kids. That's why a lot of Proverbs, Solomon talks about the need to parent your kids because he wasn't parented. That's why he asked for wisdom because he wasn't parented by David. And in the midst of this, we get two descriptions of David, who is this very flawed character individual, and then this great man. And yet somewhere in the middle of this confusing description, I don't know if you've ever read Chronicles or 1 and 2 Samuel, it's very confusing because you're like, what the heck? Because in the middle of this, we find that David is called a man after God's own heart. And I don't know about you, but it confuses me a little bit because I like to think of, 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 a, of a man or a woman after God's own heart as being someone who, like, volunteers. As being somebody who, who comes to church often and loves thy neighbor. Who shares encouraging blogs on Facebook. He put the E in evangelism, you know what I'm talking about, electronic evangelism. But David came into this point, listen to this, it gets even worse. David came to this point in 1 Chronicles 21 where David did something. It says that when he was strong, when he was in a great position, David was ruling. It says something important here. It says that the enemy came and tempted him. Now this is important to start out with. Number one, when you are strong, take heed lest you fall. David was able to be tempted by the enemy. David, who was a king, nobody is beyond temptation. And do you know what David did? He gave in. And do you know why it says to take heed lest we fall when we're standing? Because sometimes when we're standing, we start leaning on our own understanding. And so David went ahead and he took the bait and he took a census of the people. If you wonder why is it so bad to take a census of the people, there's a few different reasons why theologians have have argued about it. But one important one I can just tell you is, do you know how the Nazis got a hold of a lot of the Jews during the Holocaust? It was by going to the synagogues and reading their census. You see how it's worked against them again? So David makes a decision to give in to the enemy. You know why? Because sometimes when life is good, we feel like we have the right to do something that we know we shouldn't. Sometimes when we spend enough time away from doing the wrong thing, we feel like we have the privilege to go back to it, to taste it. And I'm not going to get into your naming what those sins are, but we have them. Everyone in here has some weakness. Something that you know that it's just kind of always on the tip of your mind. And for David's, David was able to be overthrown by one small thing, one temptation. Here's what happened. God found out about it. And that's what I want to say. When we sin, God knows. And there's a consequence for sin. Now this is a different era. But God found out about it. And God comes to David and he says, David, you're going to have three options for your consequences. Don't you kind of wish life worked like that? Do you wish, don't you wish you had three? I, I do. I've had situations where I didn't like my consequences. Like, I wish I had another option. But these options weren't good options. The option that David chose was for God to send a plague, a pestilence on the people in regard for his sin. And that's the third point about his sin, because we're tracking with this. Every time you sin, it affects other people. There is no such thing as a singular sin. Someone once told me, but what about porn? Like masturbation and porn. And I said, bro, there are people in the videos. <laughs> in the pictures. And you're going to tell me by you doing that, that doesn't affect your marriage? 
That doesn't affect your mind and the way you view people, men or women. It's the same. Even something that the world says, that's a healthy, singular act. Looking at porn and just doing your thing, it affects other people. And you know what? David, David's sin affected almost like 3,000 people in total, I think, and originally died. It might be, it might be higher, but I don't want to go any higher than that, that original number. And so you know what? Here's what's crazy. I said, okay, God, you got to stop it. you got to stop with this confusing, I'm going to say garbage in the Bible. I don't know if you're like me, but I wrestle with the word sometimes. I'm like, what in the world? Like, I, I, I could just, like, not show up to church one Sunday, and people thought I backslid. And it's like David, like, gets to, caught up a plague on his people, and he gets in the Bible, and he gets a, a title? Come on, Lord. So I'm like, all right, let me back up my claim, God. Let me go further, and let me look at what you describe a righteous man. And these are familiar verses that I'm telling you, but I want you to link them together so we bring continuum wholeness to the word. When you look up the one description of what a righteous man is, the first thing that follows a righteous man is that he what? falls. And not just once, not just twice, seven times, which was the Hebrew number of completion, which meant circular, which meant that it's, it's a, a, a hyperbole for saying righteous men fall uncountable times. But there's another fragment to that, and I like to see the whole fragment. But he what? He rises again. Some versions say gets back up. So the one description in the Bible is that a righteous man falls, but it doesn't end there. It ends when he gets up. And this is when I realize, this is why David is called a man after God's own heart. Not because he is not called a God, but a, God af- a man after his heart. Because God's heart is to see restoration. David was after restoration He was aware of his imperfection. And that's what I want to start tonight. And he wrote this psalm in one of the lowest places of his life. He had failed at his job, failed as a parent. He had failed even in his relationship to God and his faithfulness to him. And he's in a place of brokenness, of weakness. And here's how he begins out in verse 1. He says, those who live... In the shelter of the Most High, we'll find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. The Amplified Version adds, whose power no enemy can withstand. Amen? The shadow of the Almighty, whose power no enemy can withstand. The first thing that he does here in this verse, David comes in and he comes to a place where he had botched it. He had screwed up. And you know what? I'm pretty sure he didn't know what to do. So you know what he does? He says the best thing to do when you are in a situation, whether you caused it, someone else caused it, or perhaps it was out of your control or in your control, you need to do two things. You need to live and you need to rest. The word live is an active word. It requires action. It requires you to do something. But the word rest It's passive. It requires you to let go. This is important because, I'm going to clarify this, it is the character of a true believer that he dwells in the place, in the secret place of the Most High. He says you have to live in the shelter. Now, what does he mean by that? When you're in a place of brokenness, you need to go where the only place you can find life. And you're going to be in those places. If you haven't been there, you will be there. And even if you've been there, I can guarantee you're going to be there again. This is life. The only place sometimes when you're dead inside is to go to the only one who lives for, forever and ever on high. And that is into the throne room of God. And here's what it says. When you live in the shelter of the most high, of the highest, shelters have a certain maximum capacity, right? His shelter is the most high. I like when you just think about God's names like that. It is the highest covering. So nothing can go without its covering. If, no matter where you go in the world, no matter where you are in your life, you can find shelter in it because it's got the highest expanse. It's the most high. And he says, if you choose, living means you have to choose. If you want to die, what do you do? You just stop eating, right? To live, you have to choose to eat. And so it requires a choice. And you're going to find this theme in the Bible. When you want restoration and repentance, this is the key thing. You have to start with a choice to run to the Lord. 
And here's the greatest thing, right? God always does that. He says, you make a decision, and I'll match that decision tenfold. Right? You draw near to me, and I'll draw near to you. And so he says, live in my shelter. Make your home with me. Make your home with God. And it was important that David knew this, because if you know anything about David's life, he had turmoil at home. He did not have spiritual unity in his house. And a lot of us, even in here or at the other services, there was a general nod. It's like, yeah, there is no spiritual unity in my home. A lot of people agreed. And it's not just because we're judging the other person. It could even be you, you know? There is not harmony. And so, yeah, the home is supposed to be a place of love, but David's home was full of turmoil. Even his own son, Absalom, turned on him. If you remember, there was a murder in his household. And so he says, live in that shelter. Worship within the veil, within the Holy of Holies. Learn to love to be alone with God. And here's the key part. Once you choose, you find rest. You find it. It doesn't mean it's always obvious. Your rest amidst trials is not obvious. Like, well, I couldn't find rest from my trouble, so I'm going to live in my anxiety and fear. I believe that anxiety and fear are such a problem in the church today. Why? Because we aren't choosing to live in God's shelter. Because when you go into God's shelter, it didn't say you will find rest immediately. It didn't say it will be available to you, obviously, but you will find it. That's God's faithful promise. It might take a little effort, because God works in mysterious ways. I don't always understand it. I don't know why God made guys get bald as they get older. But that's how it is. And this is how this is. And so when you find rest, you find it in the shadow of the Almighty. And I think this is so strange. God is called what? The what of the world? Light. And in him there is no what at all. Darkness. What a strange dichotomy to compare light to darkness. Because I'm not familiar with talking about God in terms of shadows. I'm confirmed with shadows being kind of like ghouls and goblins and TV shows, right? Lurking in the shadows. The enemy hiding like an evil lion in the shadow of the bush, right? But not God. And so I thought kind of hard about this. I thought, well, Lord, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by the shadow? I believe one take on this is a lot of what we do in our Christian walk is public. It's out in the open, When you go to church, you're with people. And there's one fundamental thing that I love about teaching youth group is that youth group is the same thing as adults. They just voice their opinions more in person and less on Facebook. That's the only difference between teenagers and adults that I've found so far. They'll actually tell you what they're thinking. They won't just tell their spouse when they get home. (laughs) And a funny thing is, and a few people I've talked to recently, is when I ask them, hey, they tell me, you know, hey, this isn't good, or that isn't good, or there's always complaints, there's observations. It's it's an interesting age, right? Being a high schooler, you're observing a lot, you're trying to find out who you are, you're trying to become independent, you have the body of an adult, but you kind of have the freedom of a kid, and it's just, you know, it's very confusing. You've all been there, and you're like, don't want to go back. (laughs) I don't know about these celebrities trying to stay young. I'm like, I'm fine dying one day. Lord, take me. But I'll be, I'll find someone who's complaining a lot, and I'll take them aside, or when they ask me to complain, I'll ask them a very simple question. Like, how often have you been in your word this week? Alone. And I'll always get some response. Like, well, I sent a text to this person. No, 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 no. How long have you just been in the word of God in his presence? Well, my, my, my mom put on a study. No, I'm asking you how How many times have you been alone? And what I find is a common connection is somebody who complains and whose life is full of dissatisfaction is usually somebody who has not taken time to be alone with God. And shadow is concealment. And that's what I believe this means, is that we need to, in times where we make mistakes, sometimes you just need to get away from everyone. And you need to be with the Lord. But here's the second part. Not just when you make mistakes. Why? Because when you stand, you take heed lest you, what do we say? Fall. 
So when you stand or when you're fallen, you need to take shelter in the shadow of the Most High. And that requires you to shut off people. It's the shadow. There's no light. And if we're taking that literally, no phones, no nothing, you just get alone with the Lord and you say, Lord, speak to me. Lord, let me speak to you. Let's talk. Let's greet. Let's meet. And I believe that that's the number one issue missing from the church. I'm firm, I'm firm in it. I can talk to so many Christians and they don't, we call it stupid things like a devotional life. Let's stop calling it devotions and let's start calling it, if you're not doing it, you're disobedient. But you're not just disobedient, you're missing out. You cannot have power from the Lord. You cannot find peace unless you have that time with Jesus. And for those of you who have that time with Jesus, this is my encouragement. Don't give up on it and don't cut it short. Take the extra minute. Work it into your schedule. Because that's where you're going to find rest. No, you are not going to find rest from what you think. Because what you think will only give you temporary rest. This will give you spiritual rest. I've been finding it very shocking recently. Just people's, there's less people going to church and more people criticizing church. It's funny how that works, huh? And a lot of y'all in, in my generation, oh, I'm so sorry, everyone here that's not the generation, but millennials, it's just, it's terrible. You know, a lot of them just, you know, you get like some liberal arts degree and like, like lesbian dance theory or whatever, and all of a sudden your opinion matters, and you're like, oh, like, you know, I can smell BS when it's around me. So I, not to say that it isn't a certificate, but a certificate doesn't make you smart, Right? And so you have these people in this generation who are Christians. They are Christians. And yet they have all these mental problems. Now, I suffer with, on and off with depression. I received, like, pharmacological treatment for a few years. And I, it's a real thing. I am not speaking down mental illness. There's real diagnosable mental illness, but there's also preventable mental illness. There's both. And I have found that Christians in the church, when they're criticizing, when I get down to it, they're full of fear. They're full of stress and anxiety. And they're putting it on the church when they need to be in the secret place, putting it on the back of Christ. And that's my challenge to you because we're, even if you don't have an anxiety disorder or a fear problem, when you're in that place, that probably means you need to go away with the Lord. And if you're married, respect your spouse's request. Don't bother them. Let them just go in the room quiet and don't bother them. Tell your kids, train them, say, do not talk to me right now because I'm listening to my dad. How can I be your mom or your dad unless I hear from my father? And teach that fear to them. That fear, pass it down. And that's where we don't just find admittance into God's family, but residence. It's our home. I want God's shadow to be your home. You know what David did? He made a big mistake. What did he do? He ran to the shadow of God. A great king who had wise men, money. He had lots of things. But he ran to God. And I want God to feel like that. If he isn't, you're not wrong. You just need to mature. And we need to hear a little more of that in the church, right? You guys got to, we got to pick up the slack. And if you are at home with him, mature more. This is a message for all of us, not a slacker message. This is for you, for me, for all of us. And we've got to lead by example. Oh, what power would be in this body of believers if we all just took the time every day to get alone with God, right? That's where we really find life. That's why he says in verse 2, he declares... He declares something. He says, This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust in him. Anyone ever heard of Matthew Henry, late 17th century, not conformist minister? Boss, just in case you want to know, free resource. All of his volumes of commentaries are free online. You don't have to pay like $400 like I had to pay for my stuff in Bible college. Turns out I could have just gotten a free commentary online. Check it out. Matthew Henry commentaries. It'll blow your socks off. He summarized the few chapters that, that, that David speaks in this time of his life. And he summarizes it like this. He says, he is my refuge. This is what David says to God. He is my refuge and I choose him as such. And, confi and confide in him. 
Others make idols their refuge, but I will say of Jehovah, the true and living God, he is my refuge. Any other is a refuge of lies. He is a refuge that will not fail me, for he is my fortress and stronghood. Now this is really important, bringing up this idea. Notice that word there, alone. Does anybody have a different word in their version? He alone is my refuge? Anyone have a different word? Is it the same in all the versions? Yeah? Okay. He alone is my refuge. This is key. In Daniel chapter eleven thirty nine, 39, do you know what the word is that the pagans used for their idols? It's mahusium, which is not important to remember, but its meaning is vital. Because their word for idols meant strongholds. Strongholds. Isn't that crazy? They called their idols strongholds. And I want to tell you right now, in our times of brokenness, do you know how the enemy keeps us broken? And from finding rest in the Lord, here's what he does. He doesn't keep us from seeking God. He keeps us from seeking God alone. And I'm going to explain to you what I mean by that. I know many Christians, and I'm, I'm really getting serious here because I, I really try to pray, I try to seek who's going on, and even for myself, I've been in this place, so this is, again, not a condemnation. This is, I'm with you, I've been there. And if I'm ever there, again, call me out. Real talk. What the enemy does is he gets you to seek the Lord plus one. This is an invitation for a plus one that he's handing out constantly. He's giving you an invitation to serve God as your refuge. And then you'll find so many Christians who's like, God is my refuge, and God is their refuge. But not their refuge, he's a refuge. And I want to bring up something that's like so, kind of controversial, but not really, and I don't want you to get lost in this. Uh, but if you know me, I don't mind talking about these kinds of things. Let's, let's talk about some, some, some obvious things here, okay? There's an American ideal. And again, this is not to offend anyone. I'm not saying this is you. But there's an American ideal that you see in movies of a long day at work, right? And the man, he, he pops open a beer to relax, right? It's like, oh, it tastes so good. Or the woman has a glass of wine. Why it's wine with women, beer with men? I don't know. But that's how it is in movies. And you see this, this, this refreshment, right? Of like, not trying to trigger you guys, but they come home and they're like, oh, like on the long day. It's like that alcohol like took away the stress of the day. Do you know that there is something the enemy does when God is in our home as he comes into our physical homes here? And a lot of us, instead of making God our home, make our house our sanctuary. And where do we find refuge? It's in our physical homes. When you can get home to have intimacy with your spouse, maybe. When you can get home to eat a good meal. Now, none of these things are wrong. I'm not pointing out that food is bad. But what I want to tell you is we all have something in our lives that we do tend to run to. And we're scared to tell people because we might be labeled. I know just because you drink, you're not an alcoholic. Just because you smoke cigarettes, you may not be addicted. Just because you like to eat food, you might not be an eataholic. Just because you like movies, you might not be addicted to media. I'm not going there. What I'm trying to tell you is the enemy will take what we're, what we're prone to consume and he will try to bring it into a state where it's no longer just a simple gratification to God. Right? Like Paul says, it, it's not about what you eat or drink. It's about giving glory to God, giving thanks to God. And he takes this and he puts it in the way. And you know how I know he's done this? Because I've sat through church my entire life and I always thought that the one way you be a Christian is you don't smoke, drink, or listen to secular music. And then I met Christians who smoke, drink, and listen to secular music and they were like better Christians than those people. I'm like, what is what's going on? And then I realized for a second, it's not about that. What it is, nothing in itself is evil. It's what we do with it. And if we're prone to evil with things, who else is watching? The enemy. And we have to be very careful in confusing our liberties and our rights with giving the enemy an upper hand into our life. It's a scary thing. And that's what I'm saying. It's not just, it's not just addictive substances that could control you. There are so many things. Netflix, do you know that at night, I might be a little bit off, but I'm pretty sure Netflix uh, and movie streaming sites take up like 48% of the internet in the entire country bandwidth. 
half of the open internet bandwidth available for you, there's a lot of, of terabytes or whatever, uh, pet, petabytes, whatever it keeps going up to, of information, just people watching movies. People are addicted to movies. Why? Because it's an escape. It's a stronghold. And here's something very interesting. I work in a research lab. Um, and it's a, it's a tissue. It's a histological, like, regeneration stem cell lab. And if that, for those of you, that's a trigger word. This is not fetal stem cells. These are from other organisms, not humans. Um, and there's one thing interesting. We have these little worms that we like to work with. They're invertebrates. They basically don't have a spine. Um, and, you know, one reason why we work with them is because people don't care when you kill invertebrates. Sorry, I know all you animal lovers, but that's just the truth. But the really cool thing about these little guys is they're fully regenerative, which means you could chop a worm in 244 pieces, and you will get 244 full worms. You can blast this guy's brain into fragments, and then worms will be there like two weeks later. It's crazy. It's insane. Now, if you know anything about worms, and I'm going to quote this because people gave me so much slack today. I call them squirmy wormies, but it's true. Worms are squirmy, right? You think of like worms. These are not like, like, like annelids, like you know from the dirt. These are like, they're like flat worms. They're squirmy, and they're about three like millimeters long. They're very small. And so we have this problem where we want to study them, but like how do you work with them? Because they're pretty resilient creatures for being so small, so powerless, so insignificant, pretty resilient. Sound like anyone you know? So this is a true story. In order to get them to become able for us to work with them, to begin to, 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 to put our, our, our hand to them, we have to give them something that's pharmacologically understood as, this is, this is real, a relaxant. Something that will just relax them. We use magnesium. Now, you guys are going to blow, this is going to blow your minds, but... This is just a joke, but meaning, so we, we take them, we put them in magnesium, then we stick them in formaldehyde. Again, if you don't know what that is, don't drink it. If you see a bottle of it, it's, not, it's clear, but it's not water. We put them in formaldehyde and they die, but there's one problem. If the time we take them out of the relaxant into what's going to kill them, they sometimes curl up a little bit and we lose the sample. These are expensive things to work with and we don't want to do that. So, with the brilliant California University education... One of my colleagues came up with the genius idea of why don't we just mix the relaxant with the formaldehyde and put them in at the same time. So as they die, they die relaxed. That's crazy, right? Let's give a round of applause. For, yeah, I know, right? That's crazy. I right? degrees. These guys are smart. Um, and we did it. And they think they're just swimming in a pool of relaxant. And then they just die perfectly straight, beautifully done. Isn't that sound a lot like what the enemy does with us? The relaxant isn't going to kill them. And that's the things in this world. That's why I'm not here to demonize certain things. But I'm here to tell you to be careful because the enemy does take those things and he puts them in formaldehyde. And if you swim in it, you will die. You cannot escape it. And they can get a stronghold on you. And I'm going to tell you today, if anything's taken a stronghold on your life, come back to the Lord. Release it. Talk to someone. It's a battle. It's an uphill battle. You might not be perfect the first time, but God can forgive you, and he will forgive you, and he has forgiven you. Just receive it. Verse 3. It says, For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly diseases. Believer, I want to give you a promise right here. God protects believers, amen? He does. And, and that's what I want to remind us. You know, I have this, this, this guy I admire very much. Um, and I'm, I'm not trying to get political, but if I didn't mention something, this is who I am. I, I like ideas. I like debating ideas. And I have a really hard time talking to people about ideas because I'm actually trying to come to a conclusion and people always end up attacking me or something. You know what I mean? It's kind of like when you're a kid and you're like, hey, could you give me my, that's my skateboard. And they're like, you're fat. And they run away and you're like, what? That doesn't, that doesn't solve the argument. But there's this young man named Ben Shapiro who went to uh, Harvard Law School. He's a genius thinker. He's a conservative thinker. There are conservative and liberal Christians, so it's not that you have to be that. But I admire him because I think he's a smart guy. He thinks well. He argues very well. And I know some Christians who look up to him too, and they kind of look to him like, oh, this man's going to defend us. 
He's going to come out and give the argument. He's going to go out before us and strike down the people. And on the other end, maybe you're liberal and someone like Bill Maher or someone like that might be a good thinker too. And you see him and you're like, oh, this guy's going to get my ideas. and It's going to strike him down. Who's your protector? Is it Ben Shapiro, Bill Maher, somebody else you know? Is it Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders? Is it? No. It's the Lord. And we've got to remind ourselves. We've got to remind other Christians. This is a message not just for you. This is a message to remind other Christians, Christian. There's some crazy people that are freaked out about all types of things. And tell them, calm down. The Lord is your protector. You know someone who's here illegally? Tell them, calm down. God's your protector. He gives justice to those who are despised, those who are alien in the land. You who want illegal aliens out of here, say, God does the same God of justice. But may we never stop loving believers and loving God's people because God protects them. So don't try to get in the way of that because you'll find yourself getting in God's wrath. You might find yourself getting in the way of God's hand. Don't try to take down other believers. Don't try to get in their way because God protects them. You're coming up against God when you come up against a believer. When you gossip about a believer, when you strike them down, you're coming up against God. Don't do it. And God protects us in two ways. From in the natural life, meaning he gives us preservation from dangers which are very near. Just this Monday, Officer Boyer, Police Department, Whittier Police Department, if you live in the, in the 562 area, you would be familiar with this. Uh, maybe in the country, he was shot dead during a routine traffic stop. Just recently, a grandma was killed during a wedding photo shoot at Penn Park when a tree fell on her. A tree. A young man was high on drugs and somehow picked up a machete over on Penn Street about a a month and a half ago. He got shot dead by police right in front of the police station. A few months back, even further, we have near where the police officer was shot, we had a young high school girl from Lucerna die in a drunk driving accident. Car flipped. I don't know why they were doing that, but guys, unforeseen circumstances. It sounds like a movie, but there are things in this life that we cannot foresee. And I'm going to tell you, God does protect you naturally. But here's the thing. We are all accounted to die once. And so we will die at least once. And when we die, here's a second promise, that God, he protects us from the trap of damnation and gives us salvation. And that's the beauty of it. The spiritual life is that not only does grace protect us from temptations, but that God has given us the promise that even if the trap takes our body, it cannot take our salvation. Amen? He also says it'll protect you from deadly disease. Here's what's really cool. This is so cool. You're like, I brushed over this the first time, and then I looked at it, and I was like, oh my goodness. Right here, David says that God protects you from deadly disease. Track with me. David made a huge sin. The consequence for that sin is a deadly disease. David says God can still protect me from it. You know what he's saying? God is full of mercy. Because remember, I said his, his protection from traps gives you grace. Now, grace is getting something you don't deserve. It's unmerited. I'm going to repeat that. Grace is getting something you don't deserve. You didn't earn it. Literally, the Greek translation says unmerited favor. Like a merit, like Boy Scouts or the military. You earned a merit. It's unmerited, so that's pretty obvious. You didn't earn it. Mercy is not getting what you do deserve. Mercy is not getting what you do deserve, meaning God is a God of justice and you deserve consequence. But what David's saying here is even though I blew it and the consequence is strong, God can still extend mercy. And isn't that awesome? Come on, that's like great. I mean, the fact is we serve such a God that it's not selfish. If you mess up, you can say that. You know what? You might say, Lord, if I'm to live with my consequence, then let me. But if you were to spare me from it, spare me. Lord God, spare my kids, spare my spouse. Because maybe you're doing fine, but maybe your kid's all over the place. Cousin, friend. Psalm 27.5 says this. Turn your Bibles to Psalm God's word is so good, huh? It's just so good. I just love how it says what it says, means what it means. It's great. So <sighs> twenty seven five, this is from the classic amplified version, it will be a slightly different. He says, For in the day of trouble he will hide me in his shelter, in the secret place of his tent, 
will he hide me? He will set me high upon a rock. This is very important. Does anyone in here like camping? Anyone here like camping? Campers? Okay, anyone, anyone in here more of like, you know, you're more like top floor hotel, king size bed. Yeah, nice bathroom. A lot of water pressure in the shower, right? Am I here with you? Yeah, right? A couple's uh, bathtub, but you're not going with anybody else. <laughs> you're just in it yourself, and you're just in the bubbles. You're like, hey, nobody, t- nobody bother me in here. I'm soaking in the love. Okay, I don't really like camping very much for the reason why some people like camping is that it's kind of uncomfortable. <laughs> it is, right? Some people like the, un- the uncomfortableness of the, of the camping for a reason. That is, sometimes when you're in a situation where it's kind of out of your comfort zone and it's difficult, you're able to grow. Now, God says he calls himself a tent, and not just because of the tabernacle, but I believe that he calls himself a tent because a tent is important because it shields you from natural things. But yet inside, it will be uncomfortable. That's what I was going to tell you tonight. When you go into the shadow of the Almighty, it will be uncomfortable. Because light shines on darkness. And if you maybe don't know this, there is no existence of darkness. It doesn't exist. Darkness doesn't exist. Darkness is the voidness of light waves. So there's no darkness is not real. It's just what we call there not being light. And so sometimes when you're in a situation where you've messed up and darkness has encroached upon your shoulders and you come into a place, it's a little bit uncomfortable to come into the tent of the Lord. But I also believe he called it a tent. Why? Because how hard is it to get access to a tent? It's very easy. Sweetness. This is the grace of God. He just says, he doesn't say like, I'm, he says, I'm a rock, I'm a refuge, I'm a strong tower. But then he also says, but I'm also a tent. And that's why we got to read the whole Bible. Because if we're just a rock, how do you get into a rock? I'll tell you how. Like Moses struck the rock and water came out by the power of God. He can cause you to enter into anything. He can cause anything to come out of whatever he chooses. And you know what? God humbled himself into a tent. A lot of people say this is, these are allusions to Jesus being in what seems frail and weak, but yet so strong. And there's that safety in his tent. Safety. And that's what I want us to be reminded of right now. Where do we feel the most safe? Is it at the movie theater? Is it at our job? Is it when we're pleasured? Or is it in the tent of God? That is beauty. And this is why he says in verse 4, he goes, He will cover you with his feathers, and he will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Let me read that again. He will cover you with his feathers, verse 4 of Psalm 91. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Do you know why I believe God says that his feathers, his feathers will cover you? Would any other version say something different right there? No? I always like to hear if there's some other version. Someone's like, I have a great one, right? Don't you love that? When someone has like another version, like, oh, that's beautiful. I believe he says he covers you with his feathers because when we think of feathers, are feathers soft or hard? Usually, right? Again, that's why I was like, someone's like shaking their head no in the first service. I was like, okay, this is okay, zoologist. You know, you should probably know like some exception. Generally speaking, feathers are soft. And this is important, what David is saying here. God covers you with tenderness. That's what he's saying. You ever had a time where you shared with someone something that you blew it with? Like, I, so I used to think, honestly, like, when I first became a Christian, I wasn't working in this church. I thought I was the only one who just, like, blew it all the time. <laughs> and then, like, I, like, got into a church, which is why I need to be into a church. And I was like, there is a building of people who just blow it all the time? <laughs> what? That is church, right? You meet people, and you're like, whoa, you got these issues and those issues? Even if it's as simple as yelling at your kids. We do things that are just opposite of what we intend to be. We have our ideal self and our real self. And if you need help finding out your real self, talk to someone close to you. I'm sure they know. But you know what God says? He goes, you know what? When you talk to someone, I once shared something with somebody, and you know what their answer was? Dude, that's that's wrong. I said, yes. (laughs) That's why I'm sharing it with you. (laughs) Because I'm trying to confess my sin. 
I don't need someone to remind me. If you're in the Word, you know what you're doing is wrong. Don't play stupid. We, we really do. Even when we're trying to get away with it, you know it's wrong, right? What a man knows is right and does not do it, to him it is a sin. And God moves on the consciences of men. It is not Jiminy Cricket in there. It is God. He's moved in us, on us. But here's the great thing. Imagine you get injured at work, and they're like, hey, dude, you shouldn't have used the machine like that. You're like, right, my arm's bleeding. God comes with his feathers. He puts the antiseptic on the wound with a Band-Aid, gives you time to relax and heal the rest, right? And then he teaches you how to live. God comes in with tenderness. That's what I want to remind us today. God's attribute is tenderness. Guys, if you know somebody's doing something that you don't, that you know is wrong, I'm not talking about matters of meat sacrifice to idols. Those of you who don't know that reference, it's a matter of we don't really know what the answer is. I'm talking about things that you know are wrong. If someone did something evil, be tender with them. Isn't God tender with you? It's so funny that God is both a God of grace and a God of, of, of justice. And we always want grace for ourselves and justice for other people, right? Give me more grace, Lord. But, oh, she shouldn't have done that. Get her, Lord. You know, if someone cuts you off, hope she crashes. <laughs> we need to be tender, like a feather. That's a good, just keep that in your mind. When you go to approach someone, think of what a feather would be like. A tickle. It's really weird to think of, but it's true. A tickle is very faint, right? You ever seen those videos where they wake someone up with a feather? It's a very slightness. But it's slight, but you can feel it. It's a light touch, but a heavy sensation. And that's what God is, right? He's very slight and quiet, a still small voice, but he's powerful, and you feel him. He says he'll shelter you in his wings. This is important because a chicken shelters its, uh, a chicken, you know, shelters its chicklings in its uh, wings. And I felt so bad eating a double chicken mango avocado salad today after, like, (laughs) teaching on this. I was like, I'm all talking about, like, the anthropomorphism of of chickens, and here I'm, like, eating one, but whatever, they're good. (sighs) That's also, put more white meat into your diet and less red meat. That's just a tip. By natural instinct, according to some animal psychologists and zoologists, A chicken takes chicks under her wings, not only to protect them, but calls them under her protection when she sees them in danger. I didn't know that, right? Apparently they're not just clucking to be annoying. (laughs) They're bringing their chicks to them. But not only to keep them safe, but apparently, which we forget about animals, and why we have to respect them, God wants us to respect our beast, right? He does say that. It is not just a left-wing, random, liberal, anti-Christian thing to be pro-earth. God is very pro-earth. And you want to be upset with that? Be upset with that, because my God's pro-earth. He made it. He said it was good, and he never said it was bad. And so this beautiful little chicken that we just think of as food, it says that this chicken actually cherishes her chicks and keeps them warm. Cherishes them, enjoys keeping them warm. It was pleasure. And to this great example, I'm pleased to compare our God. God, Jesus, who seems insignificant to the world, right? Like a chicken. He just seems like a weak person who couldn't even defend himself. People who say Jesus didn't exist, they're just ignorant, and they don't know history, right? They've never read Josephus. They don't know history books. Don't argue that. We know Jesus was a real person. It's a fact. It's archaeologically proven. Don't get stopped there. But if they say, you know, Jesus was just a man who couldn't defend himself, you say, wrong. He didn't defend himself. Because he was busy defending you. Tenderness. Love. That's the way to win people. And I struggle with that. I'm a sharp-tongued man. God help me. That's why Boaz said to Ruth, this is a really important part, if you're wondering how to find shelter under the shadow of the Almighty, Boaz, the story of Boaz, right? Boaz is a kinsman redeemer, meaning he's a hunky man whose someone's husband died, Ruth's husband died, and he's supposed to marry her. And that she's supposed to marry him so that she can find uh, work again and be, be, be cared for. Because back in that day, women didn't have a lot of rights. And so they needed to kind of be with a man. In the Middle East, it's very similar to this day, right? You kind of got to be with a man. Even in Saudi Arabia, you have to have a male escort. It's crazy to get around town. You don't see any women's rights people protesting that, but, I mean, that's really bad. And he says this to her, he says, may the Lord repay you for what you have done. In Ruth 2.12, he says, may the Lord repay you for what you've done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. Do you know Boaz 
says that it's his wings, it's God's wings that she took refuge by going to him for help, which shows us that one way God extends his wings out of the body is, is through us. And you know what I like? Sometimes when we think that we are the body of Christ, we forget, what if, it doesn't say we're the human body of Christ. We're just the body. And so I'd like to say, if you don't know what your place is in the church, become a wing. Better yet, become a feather. I like that one. Just be like, I'm just going to become a, a feather and a chicken of Christ. And be like, hey, you know, it doesn't say chicken. It doesn't say human. It just says body. But be the feather in the body. Be the tender one. Because like I said, God help me, I struggle with that. And there's a, lot, there's a need for that. And let me be ashamed for not taking more of that to heart. And so he says this, he says in verse 5, he says, Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day. When you are in the shadow of the Almighty, you are not only free from the attack of the enemy taking you over, right? Because I said, you're free naturally, even if it takes you over physically, your salvation is, is locked in. But you are also free from the fear of evil. With night comes unforeseen things. Ideas. The future. I can't tell you how many people I talk to that are so afraid of what is going to happen in the future. It's like, do you even serve a mighty God? (laughs) Come on, guys. Do you know that you serve a God who was killed and his death is what brought life? What does that even mean? That means that God doesn't go by human standards, bro. I don't care if we were, you know, ruled by Hillary, Donald, or Captain Crunch. You know what I mean? God is going to rule and reign in our lives. And that's where we want to worry about is not just the establishment, but in the establishment of the kingdom in our lives. Because then we don't have to fear the terror of the night. The world lives without somebody. You know, you, it's so insane on the news recently. Look, people are mad about everything. Everything. I read a Huffington Post article. Why was I reading Huffington Post? Don't ask me. But, I always joke, I always say it's called Huff Post because you huff and puff and the post goes down. It's just a ridiculous website. Oh my goodness. If you work there, get a different job. Because we're supposed to be spreaders of truth, right? And... There's so much lies from both sides. All you see on TV is lies, lies, lies. And that's why people are mad, because they have no concept of the truth. I'll tell you this. There's a young lady who found out, the article is literally titled, Woman Disoriented When She Finds Out She's 30% White. Okay, I gotta read this. What does that mean? Her fingers or something? She wore gloves and she found out they were white and she didn't know? Did she lose some circulation, some blood? What's she, what's she talking about? The article goes on to say that this woman who considered herself black and Native American, which I'm gonna remind you, this is a political idea called tribalism. It's not Christianity. Don't let that affect you. We do not see each other as Greek nor Jew nor free nor, nor slave. We see each other one as Christ and all, and we do not see the differences. We embrace differences. We love them. We see them as people's identity, but we don't define them by them, and we don't define ourselves by them. Be proud of who you are, but be more proud of who Christ is in you, who he's made you to be. Remember, Christ first, us second. So I'm not talking it down, but this lady goes on to say that she took a DNA test, found out she's 60% black, 0.6% Native American, 0.6% miscellaneous, and 30% white. How that adds up to 100%... Don't ask me. But that's what it said. And she's talking about how, like, I just always said I was black and Native American, and I'm really white and black, which doesn't even matter. But the truth shocked her because she had a narrative that she preferred. Why? Because the people she hung out with probably care about that stuff. I mean, most of you in here don't care about that kind of stuff. You just see people as people. You're like, I don't care how you look. You know, like, you are who you are. But you know what? The unknown, it shocked her. Because the world has a narrative. It has something that it wants to be true, but the real world isn't what the world's saying it is right now, is it? People are saying one thing, this is how the world is, and we find out it's not true. People are saying this is going to happen, and it just doesn't happen. Churches do it too. The end times are coming tomorrow. You're like, how do you know that? No man knows the hour. Guys, there are unknowns, and we need to just embrace that and stop trying to give a narrative to things that we have no control over. 
Let's just report what we do know. And let's not blame the media and different people for misleading us. Let's be truth seekers and leaders ourselves. And tell people, it's okay. There are some unknowns, but don't fear them. Here's what he also said. Don't fear the arrow that flies in the day. This is where we're going to end because this is important. See, when he was in his weakest, this is why the Bible says when we are weak, we are made strong. It's not because when we are weak, we are actually strong. It's because when we are weak, we realize that all we need is Jesus. And in that moment, we finally allow the strength of Christ to surpass all of our pride, our ego, and our self-will. And finally, we might be very surprised, and if you haven't fallen really hard and gotten up, you're going to be really surprised how quickly you can rebound. Stop living in the guilt and the shame. Give it to the Lord. Go into the secret place. Hand it over to him. Develop that relationship. The enemy has unknowns, but by the way, I'm going to tell you this. Arrows are visible. And the enemy throws fiery darts at us, like Ephesians 6, 16 says. There are traps that are unknown, but there are also known traps. And that's what I want us to be aware of. Don't fear the unknown but be wise for that which is known. And why is David saying this? Because he made a mistake and it was preventable. There are many preventable mistakes in our lives. Do you know right now, I have the statistic a little bit off, but I'm pretty sure one in four deaths in the United States is related to preventable causes. And I'm not talking about you could have used your blinker. I mean, I'm talking about health, healthcare related diseases. One in four Something like $96 billion a year of health care is used for, to treat preventable diseases. I mean, you just eat healthy and exercise, and you're good. And this is not to shame anyone, but what I'm trying to tell you is there are things that maybe when you were younger, the generations before, have you ever noticed, when I grew up, I, th I just thought it was normal to just like eat hot dogs every day and stuff, and drink Kool-Aid and drink soda, and I just thought that's how, I didn't know there was another way. But then what happened? I got informed. I got informed, and by being informed, I was able to change my lifestyle. And that's what I want to tell you today. It doesn't matter what it is in your life that's holding you down. I don't care if it's your weight, if it's your health. I don't care if it's an addiction, if it's a personality quirk, if it's a family disorder, if it's a job problem, financial problem. I'm going to tell you this right now. You might be in a low place in one area of your life, but you need to go to God for in that place. Wherever it is, take it to him. Don't ignore it because it's uncomfortable. Don't ignore it because you got nine out of ten places right. Never be satisfied with where you're at, but be satisfied for who God is. And that will cause you to keep working with him in conjunction with him. I love all of you in here. I love you so much. And I know each and every one of us in here have secrets that we don't share with each other. Some of us wear it on our face. Some of us wear it on our body. Marks, bruises, tiredness, bags in the eyes. But I want to tell you this right now. I am not here to be your judge. I'm here to love you. And I want you to look around you right now. Look at who's in here. Be a love to them. Be a feather of gentleness. And we got to learn to find the rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Tonight, we're going to explore more of that just individually. If you, wanna, if you have to leave, I know some people have work and stuff, you're welcome to, to, to leave. Um, we're going to take communion tonight. And... Uh, we are going to have a time of afterglow. You know, I just think, wow, the afterglow, if you don't know what that is, it was a time in Calvary Chapel. It was a word that they gave when they said that after being filled with the light of Christ from the word and worshiping him, we would be a glow and we would be so filled with God that we wanted to keep going. So we would keep going. And you know what? Ironically, when that was going on, that's when the movement was strong. I'm not saying that was all of it, but I'm saying I sure as heck know for a fact from the Bible that was a huge part of it. And I want that to be us right now. God wants you. As the worship team comes back up, would you just close your eyes? Would you bow your heads? Um, I'm going to be setting up a microphone on the right here. Um, there's going to be moments where I'm going to ask if you want to come up and you want to share with uh, the group. If we hit the backlight back there too. If you want to share with the group in any way something. 
Um, we're just going to see what the Holy Spirit does. Let's just be spontaneous. Let's just let God move in his people. Let's worship Jesus. Let's adore him. Would you just pray right now? Close your eyes. Would you just pray to the Lord right now? Start speaking, whether it's in your love language, in tongues, in Spanish, in English, just so that your heart loves the Lord. Be real, be honest, be open, be broken. This is a time of reflection, a time of meditation. lost in the water and I almost drowned you speak to my heart when I breathe I admit that I need you now that I need you now Listening. Are you listening? Cause I can feel you all around me now. Are you listening? Cause I need you to hold me now. Speak to the storm and the waves die down. I was lost in the water and I almost drowned. You speak to my heart when I breathe. I admit that I need you now. That I need you. Now I am listening. I am listening, and I can feel you all around me now. I am listening, and I need you to hold me. You speak, you speak to the storm and the waves die down. I was lost in the water and I almost drowned. You speak to my heart when I breathe, I admit that I need. That I need you now I lift my eyes up To the mountains above Where does my help come from? It comes from the one I love And I am lost without you When I breathe I admit That I need 
I lift my eyes up to the mountains above. Where does my help come from? It comes from the one I love. And I am lost without you. When I breathe, I admit that I need you now. That I need you now. That I need you now. Yeah. You speak to the storm and the waves die down. I was lost in the water. And I almost drowned. You speak to my heart when I breathe. I admit that I need you. I lift my eyes up to the mountains above. Where does my help come from? It comes from the one I love. I am lost without you. When I breathe, I admit oh, that I need you now. That I need you now. So lost without you, just an orphan child trying to seek his way back home. I'm lost. Out a guide, Lord. I need your loving hand. Too many years I've strayed away, but I know forgiveness comes to those who ask and obey. You're the God of the dead and the God of the living. You're the God of the past and the future. I know. But your presence, Lord, here right now, Lord, you are present with us right now. You are present, Lord. You are present with us right now. You say, Lord, let me know if there's a word for me, if there's a word for somebody. Lord, do you want, do you desire, do you have me to receive gifts of the Spirit tonight? We're going to have an opportunity tonight to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. I'm not even going to explain it to you. I just want you to experience it. It doesn't need to be explained. It just needs to be lived. You know what I mean? We need less explaining, more living. The mic over there is open by Aubrey. If I cut you off, it's just because I'm just going to keep playing. If you have a word from the Lord, let's just sit quiet. I want you to come up. I want you to share it. And if someone's up there, you just sit in the front row. If you have a word for somebody, don't be afraid. Approach them. Approach them in the name of Jesus. Give them that word. Give them that word and that prayer. If you want to pray with someone, be emboldened in the power of the Holy Spirit. Do not be ashamed.
heart is pounding in my chest. As I came into this place as a visitor and joined together with my brothers and sisters in Christ, God, we're standing here as your children, crying out to you, whether that's with tears or prayers. Lord, we are crying out to you. We are desperate for you, and we do look to the, to the hills, and we know where our help comes from. And we are not, we will not be overwhelmed. But we are desperate for you. And we are hungry for you tonight, God, as we sit in this place, united in spirit. Although we may be strangers, we are united by your love. And we are so grateful for you. And we cry out to you, God, that you say that you bend down and you hear our prayers and you are close to the brokenhearted. And I know I'm not the only one here tonight. It was broken hearted. <laughs> and we cry out to you, God, and we just say, come, please. We know you're here, but come greater. <laughs> come greater. <laughs> come greater. Come <laughs> greater. Abba, Papa. We need you. We need you. We are desperate for you. We are hungry for you. Whether it's for us or for our children who have gone astray. We know, God, that you and only you can help. We love you, Lord. We just love you. We love you so much. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you. We love you. We love you, Mishon Nereke, San Nereke, Indrabish. You are our helper, our friend, our deliverer, our strength, our refuge, our fortress, defender. Thank you, God, that you are here for us. And if you are for us, who can be against us? And greater is he who is in us than ye of this world. And we stand here together and say, we will not be overwhelmed. We will not be overwhelmed as your sons. We will not be overwhelmed as your daughters. We will not be overwhelmed as a church. We will not be overwhelmed as the, the bride of Christ, the body. And he, we, we put this out, hear ye this day, kingdom of darkness, you have no right, uh -huh. and you have uh -huh. no power. It was uh -huh. taken at the cross. It was uh -huh. taken at the cross. Every weapon was removed. Uh -huh. You are a liar. Uh -huh. You're all gum, and you are no uh -huh. teeth. And we claim this for every situation that anyone is going through in this room. We claim the blood of Jesus and the empty cross and the empty tomb and the amazing resurrection, the resurrection power that is in me, that is in every person in this room. Oh, there is good, good things in store yes. for, for God's people. There is good things in store for every soul in this room. We claim those good things. Yes, we do not look at our situations. We do not look at the things around us. We go by the unseen, the promises in the word of God that we are victorious. We are co-heirs to the oh, throne Lord, of, the, of the heavenly throne through the blood of Jesus Christ. We are conquerors. We have more than enough. Hallelujah. Speak to your church, Lord. You speak, Lord. You speak, Lord. And we thank you, God, for the for the we thank you. We 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 are so grateful for the gift 
the gifts of the Spirit. Thank you, God, that the gifts of the Spirit are, are here. They are, you have given them to every one of us here before the earth was formed, that they are there, they are here, Father God, by your Spirit. And we thank you, Lord, for the gifts of the Spirit. And we invite you, Holy Spirit, we invite even more of your power, more of your presence, that those gifts would rise up tonight. They would be sharpened tonight. They would have laser-like heavenly focus tonight. That the that heavenly tongues would rise up. That nothing would keep it back. That the, the religion, the things in the mind will not keep back the gifts of the Spirit and this heavenly language that is given to us by God our Father. So we just pray a rising up, a rising up. However you want to move, God, however you want to do it, we welcome you. We open the doors. We open the doors of this church, the doors of our hearts, the doors of our minds. Take our minds, our lips, our bodies, our souls, Father God. It all belongs to you. We commit ourselves to you tonight as one empowered by your spirit, Father God. Have your way in this place. Bless these people. Bless these people, Father God, and have your way in this place. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Prophesy. Come on. Hallelujah, Jesus. Can you feel her move? Yeah. Oh, tonight he's calling you by name, every hair numbered. I don't want. Take it all, take it all. 
the way, my God. I just want beautiful Jesus, my nail pierced Jesus, yeah. And all my devotion, yeah, it belongs to this man. And I'm not ashamed, are you ashamed? That all my devotion, it belongs to this man. I don't want any other lovers, no, I don't want any other lovers, I don't want any other
mic is open, and let your heart be even more open. Feel free to come up, share. What is the Lord sharing with you? There's no fear. There's no fear in the Lord. You are life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken, and great are you, Lord. darkness you give hope you restore every heart that is broken and great are you Lord it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out Shout your praise Our hearts will cry And these bones will sing Great are you, Lord And all the earth will shout your praise Our hearts will cry And these bones will sing Great are you, Lord. One more time. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry and these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our love. It's your breath in our lungs. 
So we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Great are you, Lord. How great are you, Lord. One more time, it's your breath. It's your breath. It Lord, it's your breath in our lungs. Pour out our praise. Lord, we pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. We pour out our praise to you
while you're praying, you feel led to share, he's going to continue to play. And the microphone is open. This is uh, just a word of encouragement um, for everybody that's in here. <sighs> I just want you guys to know that um, the Lord knows each and every one of our shortcomings. And he still loves us. And he still loves you. And um, every day is a new day. And like that song said, you know, it's your breath and our lungs. And you know what? Just lay it at his feet. And he understands. And he loves you. And just, I just pray that um, we would all keep our eyes fixed on him. For there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Just give it to him and run your race and run it well. Amen. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Oh, there is power in the name of Jesus. Yes, there is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, there is power. In the name of Jesus To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain Yes, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain Oh, sufficient sacrifice so freely given, such a prize about our redemption. Oh, heaven's gates swing wide, swing wide. Yes, all sufficient sacrifice. And so freely given such a price for our redemption heaven's gates swing wide Lord swing wide there is power in the name of Jesus Oh, there is power in the name of Jesus. Yes, there is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Yeah, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There's an army rising up Yes, there's an army rising up We are that army rising up To break every chain, break every chain Break every chain Yes, then break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. 
smooth is an army rising up. Yes, there's an army rising up. You are that army rising up. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Cause there is power in the name of Jesus. Yes, there is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, there is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Come and break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Jesus, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Yes, Jesus, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Lord, come and break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Oh, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Oh, Lord, break every chain. Lord, break every chain. Come and break every chain. Break every chain. Oh Lord, break every chain. Yes, break every chain. Cause there is power. In the name of Jesus, oh, there is power in the name of Jesus, oh, there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Don't break every chain. One more time, break every chain. Don't break every chain, break every chain. When Elijah was talking about the wings of the Lord, um, I've always thought of like, you know, a chicken. We go under his arm like that. But the Lord showed me like his arms were huge wings. We were running into him and he was doing this. And it makes a tent because we're like tented into his chest and it goes like this. And I just saw these beautiful, majest um, majestic wings like this. And we're just under him and in him, in his chest, and he's holding us and covering us, just like it's descriptive of a tent. And then I was thinking, because we have Hebrews, the tabernacle, the angels are like this as well. And I just like, oh my God, that's so good. So I, so anyways, he wanted me to share that. So just run into Jesus. Let his, his, because it's wings, plural, wings, come over us and shelter us as our tent, our God, our Savior, our great high priest, our everything. In Jesus' name. Right now, we're going to have an opportunity, if you want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, if you want uh, a filling, a power of the Lord to come upon you, um, be blown away by the Lord, guys. Right? Isn't it, isn't it amazing?
You get lost. I get lost. Let's get lost in the Lord. He's going to play another song, and I'm going to ask if you would like to be prayed over, to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. I don't want you to believe it, and I want it to happen, and I want you to come up here, and I want you to kneel at the altar, and I want you to begin praying, and then I'm going to pray over you, and we're going to pray, and we're going to ask that the Lord would fill you, and we're going to ask that he would move upon you, and that you would gain that baptism, not of the water, but he would outpour his gifts upon you, because I believe there's coming a day when men and women will prophesy, and they will dream dreams, the scripture says and they will be filled with God's glory they will have the gifts of heaven it has not stopped it will not stop until the day when God comes back and the only gift that we need is Jesus in heaven when we are face to face but right now he has given us these gifts to be close to him to be intimate with him not to be afraid of but to be close to him and I said it's uncomfortable because it is and it's weird and if you're uncomfortable that's good it is good to be uncomfortable in the presence of God because in there you live in there you find rest I'm going to invite you as he plays right now to come up to the altar if you want to be prayed over. Even if no one comes, I don't care. I'll still pray over you guys. Just come up during the song, kneel at the altar, begin praying to the Lord, and then we'll, we'll pray at the end of the song. We'll, we'll continue. I didn't come up here by choice, but the Lord made me come up here, so maybe this might be for either me or one of you guys out there. But as we're talking about that tent, um, the Lord was just saying that you could go ahead and pitch a tent anywhere, any place. So wherever you're at in your place, in your life, um, just remember to pitch that tent. You know, I could do that at school, church, down the block, jail, whatever. But you could pitch a tent anywhere. Don't know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. And I know I rest securely in the palm of his hands. I don't know what the future holds. But I know who holds the future And I know I'll rest securely In the palm of His hands So no matter what may come my way I know I'll be alright there's no power in hell or on earth that can stand against the light. I don't know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. And I know I'll rest securely in the palm of his hand so no matter what may come my way i know i'll be all right because there's no power in hell or on earth that can stand against the light no, no matter what may come my way, I know I'll be alright. Cause there's no power in hell or on earth that can stand against the light. Cause there's no power in hell or on earth that 
I can stand against the light. I don't know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future, and I know I'll rest securely in the palm of His hand. Yes, I know I'll rest securely in the palm of His hands. So no matter what may come my way, I know I'll be alright. Cause there's no power in hell or on earth that can stand against the light. Oh, no matter what may come my way, I know I'll be alright. Cause there's no power in hell or on earth that can stand against the light. Oh, there's no power in hell or on earth that can stand against the light. No, oh, I don't know what the future holds. But I know who holds the future And I know I'll rest securely In the palm of His hands Oh, I know I'll rest securely In the palm of His hands One more time, I know Lord, I know I'll rest securely in the palm of His hand. If those of you kneeling at the front, if you could come to the middle, if you could come to the middle, keep kneeling, just come to the middle over here if you can. Come to the middle. Lord, we just come into your throne room. I need everyone to agree with me, please. Just agree with me saints would you please lord we come to you lord god we come to you right now by your power lord we come to you by your spirit we come to you with nothing knowing that you are everything we come to you asking for nothing except for you because you are our everything let all all divisions let all walls all voids be dropped right now in the name of jesus lord god may all divisions right now in our hearts towards people lord god may any bitterness may it be dropped in the name of jesus may a well spring up in our lives right now in the name of Jesus. Father, any sort of jealousy, any sort of rage, any sort of shame, Lord God, we drop it at the cross in the name of Jesus. Lord God, right now, if there be any pride in us, any encountering of anything that is not of you, Lord God, wash it away in the name of Jesus. Like a raging river, Lord God, wash us clean, wash us clean in the name of Jesus. Father, we call upon you right now by the power of the Holy Spirit, by, by, by the blood of your testimony, Lord God. We ask you right now for those on the stage that are here kneeling, Lord God, we all agree together and we ask right now, Lord God, for this brother in Christ, Lord God, we say, Lord, Lord, please fill him with your spirit. If you guys pray with me, please, it's not that it does more, we just want to agree. Lord, fill this man with your spirit. May he be baptized by your spirit, Lord God. May you give him the gifts that he desires, Lord God. May you unleash upon him, Lord God, what you need. For this sister, Lord God, we pray right now, may the power of heaven pour out on her, Lord God. May the 12 gates of 12 pearls, Lord God, open forth. May the rivers of living water flow upon her life. May you you baptize her in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and may she be filled with the gifts that she asks in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Break her, mold her, and fill her back up in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. Lord God, I just pray for my sister right here. Thank you for filling her with prophecy, Lord God. Thank you for giving her tongues, Lord God. Fill her more, Lord God. More, Lord. More, Lord. We ask you for more, Lord, for her. We agree. May it hold no good thing from her, Lord God. Give her the bounty that overfloweth, a cup that brimmeth over, Lord God. Give her what you need and what she needs to do the job that you have set her to do, Lord God. Give her peace in the name of Jesus. We pray peace over her life and an outpouring of gifts in her life, Lord God, more and more each day and discernment in Jesus' name, Lord God. 
Lord God, we pray right here for my sister in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord God. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray for her and we ask that you would fill her with your spirit right now, Jesus. We believe and we trust in you that your power comes to her, Lord God. We lay hands on her and we say, heaven pour out, spring forth, oh well, oh my soul. Let the praises flow out of me, Lord God. May she praise you all of her days. May she never walk away from you. And we baptize her in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Lord God. We love you, Jesus. Lord God, we pray right here from our brother. We thank you for the love that you have for him, for the love that he has for you, Jesus. We know that, God, you do hold no good thing from those who ask. Anything that asks in your name, Lord Jesus, we ask for him. Lord God, open up the gifts for him, Lord God. Pour out your spirit upon him right now, Father. Whatever it be, Lord God, I hear you loosening his tongue, Lord God. I hear it right now. Amen, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord God, we thank you for that, Lord. Continue to reign upon him. It's your working. It's you, Jesus. Father, we pray for my brother right here, Lord. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit and the marking that you've put on his life, that you would fill him right now with your Holy Spirit, that he'd be strengthened in love, Lord God, that he would stand firm upon a rock of truth, a rock of solid foundation on which he stands, that he would be a man of integrity, Lord God, that he would be a man after your own heart, Lord God, that he would live for you, love you, and he would be used evangelistically, Lord God, to be sharing the gospel with people. Open up evangelism in his life, Lord God. Open up an understanding of words of knowledge in his life that he can see into those around him and see them into their hearts. Lord God. We pray the power of your Holy Spirit on him. And I pray again in agreement, Lord God, for all these up here, that you would baptize them, Lord God. Baptize them by your blood, Lord God. Baptize them by your spirit. And Lord God, we pray in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit that all of us in here would be overcome and succumb by your power. That we would be overcome and succumb by your glory, Lord God. That we would be overcome and we would succumb to your awesome power. Because Lord God, you are worthy of praise. You are worthy of exaltation. Father, I know that there is none like you and there will never be any like you and we do not want to be you we want to worship you we want to serve you we want to praise you and so pour out on your church lord god we pray for revival we pray that you would ignite in our hearts a flame lord god tonight lord god that you would return to first love calvary chapel stronger than you ever came before that we would see a complete turnover lord god of lives and marriages transformed lord god that we would see families brought back together that we would see ministries that are flowing and preaching the gospel lord god that we would see lives like tonight baptized in the holy spirit and that they would go forth and they would move in power Lord God, you are a mysterious God, but you give yourself to be known to men, and we love you for it. We love you for many things. Jesus, you are the God of this church. You are the God of our church. Us, we love you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. We give you this night. We close in this song, and we give you our praise. Just let the Lord know you love him in this last song. Just let yourself be free. Just give yourself to God. Don't ever hold back. It ain't worth it. Don't ever take anything back to your life. It's not valuable enough to just give giving your all and being broken before the Lord. Let's pour it out to him in praise. Let's give him that love right now. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen, Lord. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be than here in your love, here in your love. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be than here in your love, here in your love. Set a fire down in my soul And I can't contain, and I can't control Cause I want more of you, God Yes, I want more of you, God and Set a fire down in my soul And I can't contain, and I can't control Cause I want more of you, God Yes, I want more of you, God There's no place I'd rather be There's no place I'd rather be there's no place I'd rather be than here in your love, here in your love. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be than here in your love, here in your love.
so set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, and I can't control, cause I want more of you, God, yes, I want more of you, God, oh, set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, I can't control, cause I want more of you, God, yes, I want more of you, God. No place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be than here in your love, here in your love. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be than here in your love, here in your love. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be than here in your love, here in your love. No place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be than here in your love, here in your love. Lord, here in your love. you may the Lord keep you may he cause his face to shine brightly upon you as you go out into the world as more than conquerors more than victors in Jesus may you be filled with the love of Christ may you love others may you be a light and an example may you rest in the shadow of the Almighty have a good night guys thank you so much for worshiping Jesus together we love you thank you